thank you for tuning in again to the Math Guy. Today we'll be looking at linear programming. Linear programming is usually used by big businesses to actually calculate maximum profit, maximum loss, uh, the best locations to put a warehouse, the best way to save money on shipping costs. It's usually used in business, but it, its ties are related to linear inequalities. So it's a nice way to actually see, hey, I'm learning these linear inequalities. What's it actually used for? Today I'm going to show you. So our first problem here says graph the following inequalities and find the maximum value of P. Okay. P is simply talking about this last formula down here. We don't use that to the very end. Once we get to the last point of this problem, then we deal with that. The other three inequalities here, they're known as the constraints. They are what tell us about what we know about our values of x and y. They tell us what values x and y can be. So if we have those constraints, x and y can only be certain values. If not, p could be some infinite number because x and y could be infinitely large. If they are both infinitely large, p is infinitely large. But with these constraints, we know it can't be that large. So the first thing we have to go through and do is graph each of these inequalities. So the first one we have here is y is less than or equal to 3. Well, if we graph this line, it's going to look something like this. We're going to go up 3 from our origin on our coordinate grid, and it's going to be a straight line. It's going to follow like that. It's going to be a horizontal line through 3. Now, as we look, it's going to be less than or equal to, which means we do, in fact, have a solid line. Now, after we have an inequality, we have to go through and remember to actually shade the different areas. So we go through and do some shading. We know we're going to actually shade below the line. We want all the values less than 3. So we're going to go through and actually shade it less than 3. So it will look something like this. So we go through, we take care of our shading. That's our first inequality right off the bat taken care of. So we can make a little check mark right next to it so we know we did it. Now our next one is x is less than or equal to 2. So we go through, let's use a different color. We know that x is less than 2. We're going to go over from our origin, 2 on the x-axis. This type of line is going to be a vertical line. So we draw a line going straight up and down through that one point. And just like the last one, we have to go through and take care of some shading as well. So we'll use the same color. We'll use a red to go through and do the shading. And we started that line and we shade everything to the left because we want all the values less than positive 2. So if you look, we already have this one area where all the, both of those two inequalities overlap. Those points that are actually going to be used for a p equation are going to be somewhere down here. But we have one more inequality we have to take care of yet, which is our last one. y is greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 2. For this one, let's go through, let's try a light green. We'll use a light green for this. So, for this, it's already in the form of y equals mx plus b. So we start with our value of b. We're going to go up to on our y-axis. And our slope is negative 3 over 1. So we're going to go down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. We have all this. So we can go through and actually start drawing a line through. We draw a line through those points. So we extend it down this way. We want to try to get these points as accurate as possible. So we're going to go up 3 and over 1, up 3, over 1, which means we have some more points we can use in the opposite direction. So we go through and draw those lines as well. Now if you look, we have a straight green line, or fairly straight for this picture. And just like the last ones, we have to go through and take care of some shading as well. So we'll, we will do shading as well, which means this time it's going to be shaded above this line because we want all the y values greater than that line. Now to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to outline our fully shaded region 
in a black line. So it's going to look something like this. It's going to be a little triangle. But in order to complete this problem, we're not so worried about what shape it makes. We're looking at the actual vertices of that object. The vertices are simply going to be the corners or the points of that object, which if we look, because the triangle, we actually have three corners. Okay? One of the corners is going to be located right here, the other is right here, and the last is right there. Two of them are going to be fairly easy to find. The other one we're going to have to do some estimation with. So this point right here is going to be the point 2 comma 3. The point down here is going to be the point 2 comma negative 3.5. Okay, we can estimate that one. And our last one, which is right here, we're going to say is about negative 0 0.5 comma 3. Okay, we're just going to go through and estimate that. For this problem, if you actually go through and graph it better, do it on a graphing calculator, you'll know exactly what those points are. But for us, as long as you know the actual process, you're good to go from there. Uh, so we're just going to go through and estimate out these points. What we want to do with each of these three points is go back through and fill these in to this formula. So we're going to do this in a different color for each. The first one we're going to do is negative 0.5 comma 3. We'll do that one in red. So P equals 5 times X, which is negative 0.5, plus 7 times 3. So we can go through, we can do the math, we get that P equals negative 2.5 plus 21, P equals 18.5, when we add those together. So we have one value of P. Our next value of P, we will do in blue, we will involve the point 2 comma 3. So we have P equals 5 times 2 plus 7 times 3. 5 times 2 is 10. 7 plus 3 is 21. 10 plus 21 is 31. Now, we have two of the three points done. We're going to have to go through and do the last one. So our last point is down here. We have the point 2 comma negative 3.5. So P equals 5 times 2 plus 7 times negative 3.5. So, 5 times 2 is 10, 7 times negative 3.5 is negative 24.5, and we add this together, we get P equals negative 14.5. So we go through, we want to find out what the maximum value of P is. We look through, the maximum value of P is, in, is right here, where P equals 31, because of the point. 2 comma 3. Alright, our next problem is closer to what you might actually have to do, deal with when it comes to a linear programming problem. Uh, this problem reads, each new improved burger gives the company a $4 profit, while the old version gives them a $6 profit. It produces at least 10 new improved burgers a day, but no more than 50 due to the shortage in the meat industry. Also, the number of original burgers cannot exceed more than 60 per day. Determine how many of each should be made to maximize the profit. Now, our issue here is, unlike the last problem, we don't have our linear inequalities. We have to go through and write them. So, first thing we have to do is define our variables. Something's going to be x. Let's use a different color. Something's going to be x. We'll say that X is the new burgers, and Y is the old burgers. So if we go through and do this, we have to write our different inequalities in terms of X and Y. So the first line here says that it produces at least 10 new burgers a day. So it's going to involve the variable X, the number 10, and it's going to be at least 10. At least means they can make more than 10, but they can't make uh, less than 10. So x is going to be greater than or equal to 10. And that same sentence says no more than 50. So we're still working with the new burgers. No more than 50 means it's going to be less than or equal to 50. They can make 50. They can make 49. 
but they can't make 51. So we have our inequality of x is less than or equal to 50. Our last inequality is in this last sentence right here that says the number of original burgers cannot exceed more than 60 a day. So we're looking at the original burgers, which I have marked as old. They're not old. They still, they're still okay. They're still okay to eat. So we're looking with y. So we have the y variable. We have the number 60. And it says no more than 60. We can make 60. So we have, it can be equal to 60. We can make 59, but we can't make 61. So y has to be less than or equal to 60. Now, the next thing we have to go with on our graph is understanding that we don't have 60 or 50 or more boxes to use on our grid. So we're going to say that each of these lines counts as 10 on both the x-axis and the y-axis. So we count by 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, so on and so forth. I'll make it a little bit easier. Our graph might be a little bit easier to look at and work with, so we're going to go with that. The other thing, we have our inequalities, we can graph them, still we need to find out what our maximum profit is going to be. So we have to write some sort of a profit equation. This profit equation is going to be based in terms of x and y, dealing with the amount of profit for each. So if we look through our very first line, it says that each new improved burger gives a $4 profit. So we have 4 being multiplied by the number of new burgers, which is represented by x. We have 4x. We add to that, it says that the old burgers, the old version, gives them a $6 profit. So we have 6 times the number of old original burgers, which is y. So our profit equation is p equals 4x plus 6y. So we have our constraints, we have our profit equation. We can go through and start graphing our inequalities now. Our first inequality, we'll do this one in red. We'll mark it as red. We have x is greater than or equal to 10. So we go through, that's going to be a vertical line through 10 on the x-axis. So we go through and put our point, and we know it's going to be a vertical line, so it's going to go straight up and down. So we draw our line. That's the first thing we have to do. We want all the values greater than 10. So we want to go through and start shading everything to the right of that line. So we shade to the right. As you noticed, my shading wasn't perfect. I sort of went over the line, but it's okay. We'll make it do. Our next inequality, x is less than or equal to 50. So this is going to be just like the last line. It's going to be vertical. It's going to be going through the value of 50. So we have to first count over to 50 on the x-axis. So we count by 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. We put our first point, and just like the last line, it's also going to be a vertical line, so we draw it straight up and down. Once again, I apologize for my unstraight lines. This time we want to shade everything to the left because it's going to be less than or equal to 50. We want all the values less than 50. So we're going to shade everything to the left. Okay. If you look, we already have some sort of an overlap going on. We just have to go through and figure out what our points are going to be once we do our last inequality. So we're going to graph this last inequality. Y is less than or equal to 60. This is going to be a horizontal line through the value of 60 on the y-axis. So we're going to start at 0, 0. We're going to count up to 60. So we go by 10s. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. There's our value of 60. Now we're going to draw a horizontal line through 60. Horizontal lines go left and right. Okay, It's a little bit hard to see there on the one side, but we're not really too worried about it over in here. Our next thing we have to do is figure out what type of shading we want to do. So. It says that it's going to be less than or equal to 60. So we want all the values shaded below that line. So we're going to go through, get our highlighter here, and shade below that line in our color. And if you look, we have one area where everything overlaps. We can do it in a different color just to make it really easy to see. 
it's going to be an area right down in here which I didn't pick a good color but we can shade it like this okay this little squiggly area right here is where we have the overlap so if you look it's we only have two points it keeps going down from here we only have two points we have a point right here and we have a point right here so if we look this point here on the left is the point 10 comma 60 and we have the point here on the right which is 50 comma 60 and one of these two points we're going to have our maximum amount of profit so we're going to go through and we'll actually calculate both these out. So we'll make a little box down here to find our maximum profit. And we'll just start plugging them into our profit equation. So we know that P equals 4X plus 6Y. So we'll pick our first point over here, 10 comma 60. We'll fill that in for X and Y. So we have 4 times 10 plus 6 times 60. 4 times 10 is 40. 6 times 60 is 360. We add that together, 40 plus 360, P equals $400. So if we make 10 new burgers and 60 old burgers, we'll make a $400 profit for the day. We have our other point that we still have to test. So we're going to test that as well. So P equals 4 times X. We're going to be using the point 50 comma 60. So we have x equals 50 plus 6 times 60 again. So p equals 4 times 50 is 200. 6, plus, 6 times 60 is also again 360. 200 plus 360 is $560. So to maximize our profit, we have to make 50 new burgers. So fit more right here, 50 new. And 60 old.